is milk bad for us if we have multiple sclerosis? In today's video, I'm going to talk about dairy, what the science says, why I don't eat dairy anymore, and share a delicious blueberry chocolate and ice cream recipe that comes together in minutes. Part of how I live well with my MS is by eating a whole food plant-based diet. This means I don't eat any animal products and I try to eat foods as close to their whole and natural form as possible. If you're like me, we grew up being told that milk and dairy were crucial for good health and strong bones. I was addicted to it, especially cheese and cream in my coffee. Even when I started to get serious about my diet, I remember saying, I'll give up dairy except cream in my coffee. That will be my one treat. Then I started looking into the science and farming practices and giving some real thought into why we eat dairy. Let's start with the science. MS is a multifactorial disease, meaning it has many suspected contributors like genetics, infection, immune function, and the environment. In a review released in March of this year, they proposed that milk might play a role in the risk as well. In the introduction, they said that on a global scale, milk consumption has been linked epidemiologically with an increased prevalence of MS in several studies. Hmm, several studies? One of the largest studies is the Nurses' Health Study. This study was started in 1976 and has an impressive 280,000 participants. It demonstrated a positive association between milk consumption in adolescents and MS development later in life, especially with over three glasses of whole milk per day. I definitely had three glasses of milk a day. At least one at breakfast, more if you counted the milk on my cereal, a carton at lunch, another with dinner, and perhaps at bedtime with a snack. Our parents were told we needed it for strong bones, so they kept on pouring it. And in a worldwide study of 27 countries, a strong correlation was identified between the prevalence of MS and bovine milk consumption. The review went on to say that milk may not simply be a contributing factor to developing MS, but an exacerbating factor as well. They observed that individuals with MS who did not consume dairy displayed significantly higher physical and mental health and health-related quality of life. This seems to be a question I'm asking a lot lately. Who wants better physical and mental health and better quality of life? Anyone? So what is it about milk that might be causing us issues? There are several components that might be playing a role. There's a protein in milk called buterophilin. Buterophilin is associated with MS as it is an example of protein in cow's milk, which carries molecular similarities to the body's tissues and can trick the immune system into an attack on myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein. It's part of the milk fat globule membrane that looks somewhat like our myelin. If this protein gets into our systems, say through a leaky gut, our immune systems go after it and then may mistakenly go after our myelin thinking that it looks similar to the buterophilin. The review says this about buterophilin. The cross reactivity of antibodies and T cells to both buterophilin and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoproteins may result in autoimmune reaction wherein the myelin sheath is attacked by activating immune cells after exposure to bovine buterophilins. So when our systems are exposed to buterophilin, they may become activated and then attack our own cells. Another protein that may be correlated with MS is casein. This is another protein that may be triggering our immune systems and causing our MS to flare. They propose that many people with MS have autoimmune-like reaction to the cow's milk protein casein. They explain that the antibodies that would normally react with casein also react with a protein in myelin. This, in turn, can contribute to the demyelination that characterizes MS. Okay, the last thing we need is something that contributes to demyelination. There may also be a correlation between saturated fats in the milk and MS. There are several studies linking high amounts of saturated fats to worse outcomes in people with MS. This review says that epidemiological evidence suggests that there is a positive correlation between the consumption of animal-based saturated fats and the incidence of MS. Eliminating foods high in saturated fats may be beneficial for people with MS and may help with other diseases like heart disease. 
Modern farming practices are also a concern. Most of the milk that we're drinking comes from farms where the cows are given a lot of antibiotics. They're also eating a lot of grains high in pesticides. And to keep the milk production high, the cows are being bred more often and given growth hormones. So we get a lot of the hormones in the milk. This article says current use antibiotics and pesticides were undetectable in organic, but prevalent in conventionally produced milk samples with multiple samples exceeding federal limits. Higher growth hormone levels in conventional milk suggest the presence of synthetic growth hormone. Yeah, none of that stuff's good for us. There's also concern that milk consumption could impact our gut health by disrupting the microbiome. There's growing evidence that gut dysbiosis is associated with MS. Humans are the only species that drinks milk past infancy and the only species that drinks the milk of another species. We're not designed to do that. Did you know that nearly 70% of people are lactose intolerant and many don't even know it? We're walking around with unhealthy gut microbiomes and it may be contributing to our MS. My MS diagnosis helped me to start taking exquisite care of myself. And with the concerns about milk and our health, especially the correlation to MS with the milk proteins and saturated fats, I decided to give it up. It was really hard at first for me to give up dairy. I loved it, but I no longer crave it. I got used to coffee without cream, and cheese doesn't even tempt me anymore. Every once in a while, I still crave ice cream, so I use my Ninja Blender and frozen fruits to make a sweet treat that satisfies my sweet tooth. Let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to make. We use our Ninja all the time. We use it to make nice cream. We use it to make smoothies. We use it to make dressings. We use it to chop our flax seeds. It gets used every week in our kitchen. If you're interested in one, I'll put a link to one below. So the blueberry nice cream is super easy to make. It is half a frozen banana, half a cup of frozen blueberries, a heaping tablespoon of cacao powder. I use cacao instead of cocoa powder. It's less processed. And also I like to use organic. Uh, many cocoa powders have a lot of heavy metals in them. So I try to get the best quality cacao that I can. A tablespoon of hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are really high in omega-3s and give a nice little bit of fat to the dessert. And half a cup of your favorite plant milk. We're going to blend it for 15 to 20 seconds. We like to top it with Food for Life crunchy cereal, which is similar to grape nuts. It adds a nice crunchy texture. Mmm, so good. The bananas give a nice creamy texture. The blueberries are so sweet and delicious. The chocolate makes you feel like you're eating chocolate ice cream. It is so good. Mm. If you'd like this recipe and also my recipe for a banana split and ice cream, check the link below. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoy videos like this, please do me the favor of sharing the videos, liking, and subscribing. This will help the videos to reach more people. If you'd like to see more about eating healthy, watch these videos next. Until next time, be well.